very, very quiet. I'm hunting rabbits. What's up, what's up, what's up, Doc? You're wrecking my program. You're, you're, you're despicable. Say your prayers, you long-eared galoot. Ladies and gentlemen, happy birthday, Bugs. 50 loony years. Starring Harry Anderson, Elise Beasley, Milton Berle, Pierce Brosnan, Kirk Cameron, Bill Cosby, Phil Donahue, Morgan Fairchild, Martin Ball, Debbie Gibson, Whoopi Goldberg, John Goodman, Valerie Harper, Mary Hart, Hulk Hogan, John Lithgow, Tommy Lasorda, Chuck Norris, George Papard, Ori Povich, Sally, Geraldo, Joe, Dr. Ruth, Pat Sajak, Fred Savage, John Snyder, Peter Scolari, Jane Seymour, William Shatner, Shadow Stevens, Carl Weathers, John Voight, Cindy Williams, and Little Richard. Across this town, it's a birthday wish that spread through the crowd. So now listen up, my friend, and hear us out. Now that's not all, folks. We want more. Now that's not all, folks. We want more. Want more of the laughs, more of the fun. Now that's not all, folks. He's second to none. He's charming and bold. We didn't draw. That's not all, folks. We want more. So ready or not. Only begun that crazy old ramp is still having fun. Oh, yeah, rabbit, that better not be all. You took our frowns and you turned them upside down. With your clever bag of tricks, you paint the town. So for all you've done, it's time to take your bow. That's not all, folks, cause we want more. That's not all, folks. We want more. We want more of the laughs, more of the fun. But that's not all, folks. He's second to none. Whoa! Cream of the crop, ah, oh, the laughs never stop. But that's not all, folks. We want more. So ready or not, he's only begun. That, that crazy old rabbit is still having fun. Hey there, rabbit. That better not be all. But that's not all, folks. We want more. But that's not all, folks. We want more. But that's not all, folks. We want more. But that's not all, folks. We, we want, want more. more. Well, that's not all, folks, because we will, brother. We want more, we want more the laughs, more the fun. Now that's not all, folks, he's second to none. He's has me no star the show. Now that's not all, folks, because we want more. Fast and wise, clever and cool. King of the tunes. He's nobody's fool. He's a hand with the brain. Top of the heat, he the hip of his hop and his guy on the street. A ready or not, we only begun. <laughs> That better not be all. That's not all, folks, cause we want more. What a celebration. Bugs Bunny's 50th birthday. Friends and fans, admirers and co-workers, wannabes, coulda beens, never worse, might have made it, shoulda tried it, coulda had it, and lots of got it, it ain't giving it back, have joined forces today to pay tribute to a show business legend. We're all looking at the remarkable career of a rabbit. His ups and downs, bitter and sweet, highs and lows. We interrupt this Bugs Bunny special to take you to Television City, where pro Daffy Duck protesters threaten to disrupt the show. This is Joe Gary Giolo on special assignment outside Television City in Hollywood, where Bugs Bunny's 50th birthday special is on the air. But you can see behind me a virtual army of pro Daffy Duck, anti Bugs Bunny demonstrators, and they're threatening to disrupt this gala event. Now let's get back to the show. Hints, and if necessary, out and out facts. This then is the story of Bugs Bunny's fame. The hair raising hair who's been with us for 50 years and nonstop on television for 30 years. What better place to start than right on TV? 
evening, I'm Mary Hart. Bugs Bunny, an institution, an icon, an original. And now on his 50th birthday, Entertainment Tonight takes an in-depth look at the private life of this heir apparent to the throne of the king of cartoons. We will see Bugs as few have seen him and follow his rise from the streets of the city to the heights of Tinseltown. He was born in Brooklyn, New York in the shadow of Ebbets Field. Bugs didn't have a nickel to his name, but he had something money couldn't buy, a Brooklyn accent. What's up, Doc? Bugs soon realized he was different from the other kids. He was a rabbit in a human world. But he did have a talent, an ear for music. Actually, two ears for music. Bugs got a chance to leave the hot, sticky streets of New York and go to summer camp. It was there he met a new friend. <laughs> Fudd was his name, Elmer Fudd. Oh, get that widow, old wabbit. She's the daughter of Rosie O'Grady, a regular old-fashioned coil. But performing was still the one thing that drove Bugs. It was his life, his destiny, his reason for getting up in the morning. And when you meet her, you'll see why I'm glad I called it the daughter of Rosie O'Grady. They say variety is the spice of life, but it can also be the knock of opportunity. Bugs must have had his lucky human's foot that day when this ad ran in the paper. And Bugs was on his way. Like the Dodgers who were to make the same trip years later, Bugs left Brooklyn and headed for L.A. He arrived in Hollywood three days later and made a beeline for Warner Brothers Studios. Warners didn't know it then, but they had themselves a real superstar. His brilliant performances did not go unnoticed. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences nominated him for an Oscar for his very first starring role, A Wild Hair, directed by Tex Avery. From there, all the big animation directors were falling over each other for a chance to work with Bugs. Frank Tashman, Bob Clampett, Robert McKimson, and of course, Chris Freeland who got Bugs his first Oscar for the classic Nighty Night Bugs. Prepare yourself, Rabbit! I'm a-coming over the wall! <laughs> you pay for these farmers? I grew up with them. It's like your own child. You, you created that child and you grow up with that child, or the child grows up with you, and you can never lose that love for that child. Another of Bugs' all-time favorite directors, Chuck Jones, lent his special gifts to such masterpieces as Bully for Bugs and What's Opera, Doc? Kill the wabbit, kill the wabbit, kill the wabbit. Kill the wabbit? If you want to compare the characters that we worked on, I think all of us would say, and I, that, that no nobody could be Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny is a is something. It's an aspiration. It's what you'd like to be like. Steven Spielberg presents Tiny Toon Adventures. Meanwhile, Bugs is serving as a consultant and guest star in Steven Spielberg's new TV show, Tiny Toon Adventures, and is wrapping up his latest theatrical cartoon, Box Office Bunny, which you're seeing now for the first time. Shh. Meow. What's up, Doc? Excuse me, but you have to be quiet or... Hey! I didn't see you come in. If you haven't got a ticket, I must ask you to weave. Ask me to weave? What about you? Where's your ticket, Mac? Me? Uh, I don't have a ticket. No ticket? It must be here someplace. No ticket, eh? Well, you've got so one now. So here we are. Bugs is at the half-century mark and shows no signs of slowing down. The kid from Brooklyn has become the Lord of Looney Tunes. And while his accent is pure Brooklyn, his appeal is universal. From all of us at Entertainment Tonight, happy birthday and congratulations, and keep those cartoons coming. That's cockamamie birthday stuff. It's just nonsense. What's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? You say you're responsible for that? I knew I should have taken that left turn at Albuquerque. I should have taken a left turn at Albuquerque? 
Another phrase that you're taking credit for? Ain't I a stinker? And of course, ain't I a stinker? <laughs> Mr. Wiley, do you honestly expect America to believe that these time-honored quotations were stolen from you by Bugs Bunny when you were kids in Brooklyn? We are talking to men who have changed their names to Bugs Bunny in hopes of getting women, but are failing miserably. We'll be right back. Vice President of Hardaway Publishing. I am Stalling, President of Anvil Records. Mel White, Senior Vice President of Perth Amboy Amalgamated Industries, and Harry Canis from the Pismo Beach Institute of Human Behavior. High-powered executives by day, Bugs Bunny impersonators by night, the secret world of corporate America. Okay, so let's roll that videotape right now, Jim Bob. Let's take a look. Anvil accidents, or are they? That's the focus of this investigative edition of Parole. Coming up, Bugs in Love and at War with Dr. Ruth and Hulk Hogan. Oh, no, you don't. Get back in your seat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The first one that tries to get out of here to warn that rabbit gets his hide blown off. And that goes for the rest of you. No, I want my name above the title. Above the title. <clears throat> my agent. Uh, I just want to say a few words. Any actor who's called upon to do what are called romantic leading roles inevitably finds himself measured against Bugs Bunny. Bugs, of course, set standards of charm and savoir faire, which are, well, they're just very difficult to live up to. Your eyes are like limpid pools. Your teeth are like poils. Real ones, no dime store phonies. Mmm, carrots. And your lips. Oh, your lips are like, like, like... What a man! Woman. He's got the dance moves of a stare. The voice of Caruso. How do? Welcome to my shop. Let me cut your mop. Let me save your crop. Daintily. And the looks of Kevin Costner. Baby. Kevin Costner with bunny fur. Oh, I like that. trouble with some dames. Kiss them and they fly apart. Okay, Bugs, what's up? Did I do something to offend you? You never call, you never write. I thought we had something special. Now, you told me it didn't matter if I wasn't animated. Humans have feelings too, you know. Ain't I a stinker? Bugs, you've always been the one I needed you. When I was little, I had my Bugs Bunny pajamas. When I was in grade school, I had my Bugs Bunny lunchbox. But now, I'm in junior high. And Bugs, I really need your help on this. See, there's this girl that keeps calling me. And, you know, we all know you're the rabbit Romeo. So please, just give me a couple of pointers. Hello. Eh, going my way? Mm-hmm. What makes Bugs Bunny a sex symbol? Perhaps most noteworthy for me is how comfortable he's always been with his sexuality. So comfortable. In fact, that years before most comedians were willing to slip into a dress to get a laugh, there was Bugs Bunny leading the pack, looking simply irresistible in satin and lace.
please stand by for an update on the pro Daffy Duck protests. We take you to Hollywood Boulevard, where our roving reporter, Joe Garagiola, has the story. Well, the pro Daffy protest, which began outside CBS Television City, has now spread to the famous Man's Chinese Theater here in Hollywood. This theater has shown many of the great films of Bugs Bunny, not to mention Daffy Duck. And that's probably what Warner's pays you for, not to mention Daffy Duck. Why, that duck is the sexiest, most fascinating guy in this whole town. That's telling them, sister. Lord love a duck. Lord love a duck? Well, I tell you what, if I were to evaluate the mood of the crowd, I'd say it's rancorous, cantankerous, ominous, and a tad vindictive. Kind of like the Cardinal fans were when they would name me in the starting lineup. Now, we're going to keep you informed, but right now, we're ready to return to the show in progress. <laughs> Bugs the competitor, just like I am. His opponents are crazy. Hey, baggy eyes. We're all familiar with Bugs. And I see him as a man's man. He's tough. What's the big idea? He's aggressive. Bugs Bunny was here. He's resourceful. This town ain't big enough for the two of us. It ain't? Uh, pardon me, Mac. Now is it big enough? Some say Bugs reacts too physically. I say he's just acting in self-defense. There's no need to split hairs. You decide for yourself. There ain't no place like a hole in the ground, a hole in the ground, a hole in the ground. There ain't no place like a hole in the ground with a big fat gonna floating around. There ain't no place like a hole in the ground, hole in the ground, a hole in the ground. There ain't no place like a hole in the ground with a big fat gonna I saw a guy do this in a toothpaste ad once. Ta-da! Ho, ho, ho! Hulk Hogan, we've got a lot of pretty confident Bugs Buddy fans out there who are sure that Bugs will be the victor in your big upcoming match with him. Bugs! I don't even have a match with Bugs! Well, you mean you're not aware that Bugs Bunny, confident in his drawing power, has challenged you to a match? Bugs Bunny and Hulk Hogan in the same ring? Bugs, you don't know the first thing about wrestling. Can you get? Oh, Morithon. Hello, everyone. I'm Maury Povich. And Welcome to A Current Affair. It's time to break out the party favors and blow up the balloons. America's favorite wisecracking rabbit is celebrating his 50th birthday this year. Yuck. Or is he? Could it be that this celebration of hair-raising proportions is nothing more than one of Hollywood's biggest hoaxes? We've seen bugs mature and change over the years, but could it be possible that what we've actually been witnessing is not one rabbit, but at least three? A current affair investigated the story. Meet Max Roth, actor, dancer, retired cartoon character, and if his claim is upheld in court next month, the real Bugs Bunny. In 1939, Max says he debuted as a crazy rabbit in the Warner classic, Harem Scarum. Shorter and with his oval-shaped head, Max was a far cry from what we've come to recognize as today's carrot-chomping Looney Tune. But is this the true Bugs? Legally, Max claims to be the one and only Bugs Bunny. Unfortunately, Warner Brothers and their attorneys disagree. Mr. Popich, 
Popovich, tell me, do I look like bugs to you? Of course I do. Unfortunately, nobody wants to admit it but me. It just isn't right. It isn't right. They owe me. I'm Bugs Bunny. And if I'm lying, I should drop dead in this spot. But believe it or not, Max is not the only one. Others have stepped forward claiming to be the original Bugs, some of them more easily dismissed. OK, roll them. I know my lines by heart. Mm. What's up, Doc? A current affair has obtained some rare behind-the-scenes footage from an anonymous source. And as you can clearly see, the actor in this film is neither Max Roth nor the bugs we know today. The actor who appeared in that footage was unavailable for comment, but an associate of his agreed to be interviewed on the condition that we protect his identity. I've known that crazy wabbit for half a century, Mr. Povich, and believe me, there's only one. Don't tell him that, stupid. Tell him what I told you to say. Uh-oh, I forgot my wines. Sorry, Mr. Duck. <laughs> Don't say my name, you idiot. Mr. X, are we alone? Uh, well, uh, in the final analysis, uh, aren't we all alone? Wasn't it John Paul Sartre who wrote... A current uh, affair continued its investigation and relocated a man who purports to be Bugs Bunny's first agent in Hollywood. So, uh, you want to know about Bugs, huh? Well, you come to the right place, pal. I knew Bugs when he first hit this town. <laughs> he was still wet behind the ears. And with him, that could be a real flood. <laughs> he hippity hops in here and he tells me he's gonna be a big movie star. By the way, it wasn't Max Roth or anybody else in a phony rabbit suit. To get to the bottom of the mystery, a current affair went directly to the people who should know. The famed Academy of Animation, headquartered in Burbank, California. Contact there was the Academy's attorney, Herman Thurman. Mr. Thurman, could we have a moment of your time? Oh, this is about Max Roth, isn't it? Max Roth and his claim that there's more than one Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Ridiculous. Bugs Bunny's physical appearance has changed over the years. But what rabbit hasn't aged a little? With the kind of wildlife that they lead, no wonder. But I'll tell you why you think there's more than one Bugs. It's the lighting, Maury. Lighting is very important. Hitchcock knew it, Spielberg knew it, and now you know it. <laughs> so there you have it. After an extensive investigation, we find contradictions, claims, and confusion. What's really up, Doc? The cartoon community should get its story straight for Bugs Bunny's auspicious 50th birthday. I'm Maury Povich. Until next time, America. <laughs> And now, a word from those fine folks who bring you all those wonderful Acme products. Hey, hey, howdy, friends, howdy, neighbors, and howdy, duty. Acme Al here with a special sale. It's Bugs Bunny's 50th birthday, right? Right. And to celebrate, we're offering some amazing birthday savings for you, all from the wonderful people at Acme. Acme, the greatest name in cartoon products. Acme, the name you can trust most of the time, like our Acme Elephant Bullets. Yes, it's the Acme Elephant Bullets No Bull, and they're just $29.95 a box. That's not $49.95. That's not $39.95. You get the birthday special back by Bugs, only $29.95. Be the first one on your block. Be the only one on your block. Get off your block. Get your block knocked off with the Acme Stove Lid and Stove Lid Lifter. How many lumps do you want? Oh, three or four. You say you want birdseed? I have birdseed, but not any old birdseed. I have the Bugs Bunny special $29.95 Acme birdseed. Just watch what a box of this will do. Now buy three and I'll throw in the official Howard the Duck t-shirt and home game at no charge whatsoever. Psst.
But there's more. Drive on down to Acme Elves for your supply of Acme do-it-yourself tornado kits. Remember, the Bugs Bunny birthday savings will not last, so don't forget to come on down before midnight tonight. That's Acme Elves for smashing deals. This just in. The protests have fallen apart. No, stupid misfits. I'll do the job myself. You know, working on the same lot with the great Bugs Bunny works has been very meaningful to me. I mean, I walk on the same streets where he hops, and I eat at the same commissary where he orders the sandwich that was named for him, carrots and lettuce on a Kaiser roll. You know, I even walked over to the stage where he's filming his latest picture. But you know, the greatest thrill of all is getting the exact same dressing room that was assigned to Bugs when he first came here to Warner's. Ah, Warner Brothers sure knows how to take care of their stars. What a job for a duck was my talent. Pushing a broom while others with absolutely nothing on the ball get all the breaks. How many times have we seen it when good old Bugs has to do battle? Take one step on that rope and I'll cut it. <laughs> my, what, uh, what big muscles you got. <laughs> you realize this means war. Be very quiet, honey wabbits. Nobody throws a rabbit punch quite like you. <laughs> Happy birthday, Bugs. Nice to see that two-dimensional people are still working. This joint makes Siberia look like Miami Beach. And anyway, how come you send a rabbit to do a man's job anyway? Because hmm? rabbits are expendable. That's why. If he didn't go into acting, he could have been the greatest baseball player that ever lived. Catching, Bugs Bunny. Left field, Bugs Bunny. Right field, Bugs Bunny. Pitching, Bugs Bunny. Third base, Bugs Bunny. Center field, Bugs Bunny. First base, Bugs Bunny. Shortstop, Bugs Bunny. Second base, Bugs Bunny. Come on up, boy, up, boy, up, boy. You're out. He's safe. You're out. Safe. 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 Out. Safe. Out. Safe. Out. I say you're safe. If you don't like it, you can go to the showers. Okay then, Doc. Have it your way. I'm safe. <laughs> He nails those wacky roles, but for my money, Bugs is really at the top of his art when he gets a really dramatic role. Hark! What light through yonder window breaks? Tis the east, and Juliet is the sun. Oh, those lips, those eyes, those ears. Now, let's see, uh... Oh, yeah! I'm the mayor of the town, and gentlemen of the jury, you can't send that poor boy to prison. <laughs> Calling Dr. Gillespie. Ta-da! Mr. Christian, look at you, disgrace to the Navy. This is mutiny, Mr. Christian. Mutiny, that is. A master, Mr. Christian, batten down the hatches. Aye, aye, sir. Man the mouse sprint, stole the mizzen mast, jive the jib boom, hoist the mainsail and lower the tattersail. Look sharp, man. Pipe the starboard hatch the leeward, swats and trim the scuppers of the port poop deck. <laughs> what a maroon. <laughs> hey. oh. That yo, somebody, Sam, what a character. What a maroon. <laughs> what a chicken picking, cotton plucking guy. <laughs> Down to the crocodiles you go. Down, down. Oh, come on. Down. Ooh. Down, down, down. When I say down, I mean down. You know, my friend Bugs is certainly a great actor. But most people don't know he also does his own stunts. Two for the show, three to make ready, and four to go! Bon voyage! Uh-oh. Forgot to fill the tank with water. Now, you smarty pants, let's see 
you get out in this one. <laughs> this time you're a diamond. Bugs was one of my best friends in the movies when I was a little kid, and it's just nice to know that my own kids are going to get to know him now, too. Happy birthday, Bugs. We just got word that we've located Daffy Duck at a restaurant. He is having lunch with the great Hollywood columnist, Army Archer, the columnist for Variety, and we now take you to one of the favorite star-watching restaurants in town, Spago, overlooking the glamorous Sunset Strip. Thanks for uh, doing lunch with me, Mr. Archer, and letting me air my grievances. It's this non-stop publicity blitz. This, this rabbit mania. It's Bugs Bunny here and Bugs Bunny there. I'm telling you, it's more than I can stand. I'm not saying you don't have a legitimate gripe, but do you think this is the right way to go about it? Picketing all over town and disrupting the Bugs Bunny celebration? Listen, Mr. Hotshot Variety columnist. I'll have you know that those were spontaneous demonstrations. Well, it looked more to me like a well-financed, highly organized, and politically motivated plan. Well, uh, you can't leave these spontaneous demonstrations to chance. Tell me this, Daffy. What do you have against Bugs anyway? You mean besides the fact that he's a stuck-up, scene-stealing, hypocritical hare who would sell his own mother for a... Your reputation for backstabbing your fellow actors is legend in this town. Like the time when Porky left the studio and you cozied up to the producer and tried to take Porky's place? Quite the contrary. I begged Leon Schlesinger to take Porky back. Leon, you ought to be glad to get rid of Porky. How about me taking his place? Why, I'm a better actor than he ever was, huh? All right, What's all right. It, Leon? How's about it? What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? I'm the real all star right, all here. Right. Porky never did anything. I did all the work. I did all right, I'll think it over. I'll think it over. First it was with Porky, and now you're bad-mouthing Bugs. Even you must admit that Bugs has tremendous range and depth as an actor. Here's my card. Look me up at my Gettysburg address. I thought his Lincoln was brilliant. Ha! Huh. Bugs of Lincoln couldn't hold a candle to mine. Mine was more dignified, statelier, more presidential. <laughs> No matter what's the role, that uh, rabbit always got a winning hand. I, I got a full house. What you got, sucker? Gee, does that beat me? All I got is two pair. A pair of ones and uh, another pair of ones. And they always gave Bugs Bunny the big star treatment. Top billing, deluxe accommodations, while my perquisites were strictly second rate. There can only be one explanation for white tile in a dressing room, and that's it. It's excruciating, exasperating. There's just no justice for us ducks. Ah, here comes the food. Compliments of Wolfgang, Mr. Archer. Your favorite, duck a l'orange flambe. What? I'll fricassee ya! You muckraking journalist, I ought to give you a sock in the snoot. Ah, oh, ah, you. Henceforth, I shall take my patronage elsewhere. When you talk about Bugs Bunny, see, a lot of people talk about Bugs Bunny, but Bugs would not be Bugs today if it wasn't for Mel Blank. But I love Bugs Bunny. And yes. guess who's his friend? Who? Donald Duck. Wrong people. Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. No, what about no, that? you got the wrong people. That's the people that I know. No, but you don't. You have the wrong people. Yeah, Bugs Bunny is not Disney. See, how old do you think Bugs Bunny is? Thirteen months. No, that's how long he carried. No. Thirteen. Okay. Now let me let me ask you a question. Have you have you watched Bugs Bunny? Yes. And when he talks? He does. What does he say? He say. Hello, Doc. Right. But the man who did his voice is Mel Blank. And they told me that Bugs was a tough little stinker. The little character, and I had to give him a small voice. I thought, which is the toughest? Either Brooklyn or the Bronx. So I uh, put the two of them together, Doc. That's how I got the voice for Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Yeah, hold it just for a second. Dad, would you pick up the Bugs line just before that? And really, and, and very, very concise. Just keep it just a little bit toned down. Okay. The uh, 1,001 Tales for Toddlers. That's good. Are you going to talk? Uh-uh. 
Well, we'll make you talk. Well, how nice. Talk. 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 What's Winnie the Pooh? Do you know him? No, we're not talking about Winnie the Pooh. We're talking about Bugs Bunny. Is that right, Bugs? You would be nothing without Mel. What would you say? Oh, yeah, Mel Blank. <laughs> he wouldn't want it publicized, folks. But actually, I do Mel Blank's voice. I love the rabbit. I got him all over me, my tie, my shirt. <laughs> Sure, you know, Bugs had all the moves. He's sharp, he's slick. He can take a fall with the best of them. Me. What's up, Doc? I never saw that before. On the Bugs Bunny? Shucks, man. No. When we talk about Bugs, we think of, and I'm sure he'd say it himself, you think of a wise, cracking, smart, talking, slightly cynical hair with a Brooklyn accent when you're talking about Bugs Bunny. Oh. It was what he said. Well, that was as much as what he did that made him stand out from the crowd. But he's as a little... Rabbit. He's... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and Elmer Fudd was funny with him. Elmer Fudd? Yeah. Yes! Hey, Pinhead. Do you know how to make antifreeze? Yeah, hide a nightgown. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me, what's up, Doc? Hey, we got something, Doc. Let's do it again. Me. What's up, Doc? You know, I love Elmer and Bugs. I love them. You know, Mel Blanc spoke so well for them and hundreds of other characters. And since neither Bill nor I can speak for Mel, we'd like to think that he would have loved this recognition of his remarkable talent. You know, we miss him very much. He's left us, well, speechless. And as for you, Bugs, babe, I guess the thing I admire about you most is that you've never allowed yourself to be typecast, you know? Like, most rabbit actors would probably be really happy to get a gig delivering eggs once or twice a year, you know, doing a, a Mad Hatter trip in community theaters, but not you. I mean, you've played every part. Man, you are the Dustin Hoffman of bunnies, and I am truly impressed. So, Bugs, from my heart, happy birthday, bunny. <laughs> the king, your majesty. Watch out, Doc. Okay, Wabbit. Now I've got you. Watch out, Doc. Wabbit season. Duck season. Wabbit season. Wabbit season. Duck season. Fire! You're despicable. What's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? I'm gonna make rabbit stew. Three, four, five, ten. I hate you. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Wild E. Coyote. Genius. It is obvious that this is no ordinary rabbit. What's up, Doc? I'm no doc, you flea-bitten farmer. What's up, Doc? <laughs> This means 
against law.